Welcome along guys, we're at the Fox and Inn in, uh, in, in uh, East Meon, West Meon, I don't know, somewhere, it's closed anyway, so that's not important. What is important is this, the brand new 2020 Super Duke R, and I've had this bike for a week from KTM, I've been using it all week, I've been, uh, I've been falling for it a little bit, but today in this video I'm just going to talk you through some of the features, how I've been getting on with it, what I think to it. I've, uh, I'm sort of quite liking this one. <laughs> Join me for a chat and a ride on the new Super Duke. Roll the intro, Chopsy. So I've been riding this around for about a week, as I say. When, if you haven't seen my first ride review on this bike, as per usual, I'll put a link up there. It's all a bit frantic. It's all a bit exciting. This bike is a beast. It's called the Beast. The uh, you should guess by the the name of this bike what it's about before you even throw your leg over it. It is an absolute crazy hooning lunatic. And after I got home from that ride, I rode it for about four hours that day. All of it, pro well probably 60% of it, over legal speeds. <laughs> it is an amazing bike. And when I got off it, I was like, is this bike too much for the road? Could I ever control myself on a bike like this? And that was my biggest concern. And uh, since then, I've tried to take it easy on it. And today, I've just been out poodling around literally and she's an absolute pussycat i mean that that is the thing with it that's what worried me the most would it just be too insane and i'm so pleased to say that it isn't just a one trick pony this or a one trick beast the last couple of years manufacturers have nailed the fueling these new euro emissions they've got them running pretty darn well but this is a 1300 cc monster it's not going to be an easy bike to get the fueling set perfectly on. 5% throttle inputs, it's just very, very smooth, very, very nice, and it makes it an absolute joy just to poodle around, and you can do it. I'm now at the stage where I don't feel like I have to just go banzai everywhere, and that was my biggest worry. It can do the slow stuff. Bang it in third, 30 miles an hour. This is 2,500 revs. I mean, this, on the old Super Duke, this would be the... It would be that territory. It would be very uncomfortable to ride at this speed. But it's perfectly tamed. You know, absolutely minuscule throttle inputs. You won't even be able to notice me moving my wrist. But it's just beautifully fueled. 3,000 revs, third gear. Now, if I was to give this a bit of a, a handful, it would just take off. Watch this. 60 miles an hour that is how ferocious it can be but if you're gentle on the throttle the low speed low rev fueling is mwah, bellissimo what's austrian for bellissimo for beautiful i don't know it's lovely and then when you are on the faster stuff the thing just handles now it's just an absolute weapon on the twisty bits of tarmac Gone is the poor front brake feel. Oh, where'd that discovery go? Oh, he's gone. Gone is the poor front brake feel. Good, goodbye to the instability and not instability. Well, yeah, instability from the front end. Gone is all that. This thing is taut. This thing is tight. This thing is lean. This thing is mean. <laughs> it's an incredible bike when you want to do some hoonage on it. Let's do another bit of overtaking grunt. Fifth gear, well that is probably pushing too much. Fourth gear, three and a half thousand revs at 50 miles an hour. Let's overtake. Yeah, that's pretty easy. You don't even have to knock it down. That's just pulling from 3,000 revs. All of that grunt needs some serious brakes. And this bike has serious brakes. The latest styling, the calipers, Brembo master cylinder, fully braided lines the old bike's brakes i said in my first ride the old bike's brakes were never as good as its competitors like the tuono they felt wooden 
not so on this the brakes are absolutely incredible loads of initial feel and then just masses of stopping power when you stamp on them that is complemented by the exceptional electronics on this bike full nine access imu up up down left right up there how many is that left right i guess there's nine there what that gives you is things like cornering abs so not only have you got abs but when you're stonking around the bend and you're giving it a lot of front brake you've got that protection of the cornering abs riding it you don't even really notice it's got any you really think you're some sort of road riding demon that you can control this machine you don't even realize they're there they're not intrusive when they do activate they, they, they're, they're very you know they're, they're not obvious that it's doing anything and that i think is the ultimate in electronics you don't know you've got them no one wants to feel like they're being held back all the time and you just don't on this these latest electronic systems are so clever they're just there to help and complement your riding not to hinder it a little bit damp here a little bit dampy we've had some rain and nothing new there <laughs> unbelievable dollops of power the only electronics you might want to consider turning off with such a, a hoonigan is the uh, anti-wheelie perhaps and the good thing about this bike on the old gen 2 bike you could turn off the anti-wheelie and you could leave the traction control on but you had to be in track mode which meant when you're in track mode you couldn't use the cruise control you couldn't see the time all, all of those things with this bike if you unlock it with the, uh, with the with the packs it now has something called the uh, there's four rider modes now something called the performance mode now if we go into the performance mode shut the throttle go back again the performance mode lets you enable the track features so you've got the slip control there's two buttons here a bit like the tuono and you can adjust the amount of slip to the rear wheel there's nine different levels so on number nine it will give you lots of protection but number one it's the minimal protection so it'll let you get out of shape a little bit but still be there to, to keep you in check so you get all of that you can still use the cruise control and you can still see the time and you can now turn off the anti-wheelie as well the ultimate hooligan setting would i turn off the uh, anti-wheelie on this bike yeah of course i would performance anti-wheelie mode Oh, it's already off. Wheelie control is already off in the performance mode. Oh, so good in the corners. It would be incredible on track. Absolutely. Incredible on track. I'd love to get it on a track day. It's so nimble. It feels short. So it really tucks in quickly. They've reduced the weight of all the wheels on this as well over the old model. Because they've had to Euro 5 this, because they've had to add all of that stainless steel exhaust, which is obviously heavy. You know, they've had to cut weight elsewhere on this bike. This bike is lighter than the old model. I think it's 180 kilos, 185 kilos dry. It is lighter than the old one. And they've had to add more stainless steel pipe work for the cats and stuff so that adds a lot of weight so they've had to rethink where they're saving their weight and they've done a lot of that on the wheels the subframe and it's made hu paid huge dividends on the road to the feel of the bike <laughs> and there she is the new super duke ah first up We've got the Stylemas on this, work absolutely fantastically. Above the Stylemas we have the WP Apex suspension. And I like it on all the new KTMs, you get the uh, the travel adjuster, the little, little rubberized things, so you can see how much travel you're using on your forks. I love that. I guess they didn't really need that before because they never had preload adjustment, but now they do have preload adjustment. For this year, the headlight has changed again. 
Now there's a big slit down the middle and the air intake is actually in the centre there. Can you just about see the, uh, the little, little uh, mesh on there to stop the bugs getting in? But the intake is right at the centre of the bike and it's the same design, you know, this piece of metal in the centre of the headlight acts as like the cooling for the LED headlight. So it's a very, very well thought out design and I really like the look of the bike from the front. I think it looks really mean. New for this year is this carbon composite rear tail. Now the old bike of course was famous for its trellis frame. Yeah, that was one of the things which people sort of complained that was lost really. But this does have its advantages. It's a lot lighter. I think it gives the bike more of a sporty look. And apparently you can also take some ridiculous amount of weight on here, like 500 kilos or something. It's ridiculously strong. So you can literally pack your entire house onto the back of this bike for touring if you wanted to. And there's one other benefit to having this bigger rear. Look at this. And look, it's a bike with some rear storage. I could get something useful in that. That's actually a reasonable size tail. I can get my whole fist in it. I can fist its ass. No problem at all. I could get my full McDonald's meal in there, my McDonald's breakfast, maybe even a small flask of whiskey or something. Absolutely fantastic. A bit of storage on a performance motorcycle or any sort of motorcycle. That's, uh, that's amazing. A hooligan plus she's practical. While we're at the back of the bike, the seats, I really like the finish on them. It is plastic, but it just has, it does have a quality feel to it. You've got a little R embroidered onto the rear tail, which is actually a decent size. I think you could get a pillion on there, reasonably comfortable. Whether they could actually stay onto the back of the bike and hold on is another matter. Talking of preload, this bike also has remote preload adjuster for the rear shock. Brilliant idea. I mean, a lot of bikes you've got the normal preload collar on your shock, but you can't really adjust it without taking the shock off the bike. It's not easy to adjust the preload on the rear shock. That is a really nice little touch, and I've actually wound in plus 10 worth of preload onto the rear shock because I'm a larger guy. So that's given me the option to tune it easily without having to break into the toolkit or remove the rear shock. So, brilliant feature. The wheels are much lighter than the old bike. I never, I didn't really like the design of these again when I first saw them, but again, they've really, really grown on me. The single sided swinging arm is seriously beefed up for this year. Look at that big bit of extra bracing. And while I'm on my knees, while I'm down here, you can see the rear linkage on the rear shock. So that's enabled that rear shock to be much, much longer. Right, well there we are. I think that's the features pointed out. Let's jump back on. Yeah, so as you might have noticed, I'm, uh, I'm quite taken with this. Are there any bad points? All I've spoken about is fantastic things about this machine. Are there any things I don't like? They're few and far between. There's a couple of small niggles. The, uh, the indicator switch feels a bit cheap, a bit cheap and nasty. It feels like it could actually maybe break off you know it's <laughs> that would be a bit harsh but it, it, it doesn't have a very nice feel to it also the switch gear isn't illuminated not on this side of the bike anyway even this 790 duke had illuminated switch gear that seems like a bit of a backward step not to have it illuminated this is illuminated this side but this isn't so that seems a bit backwards uh other bad points the mirrors there there <sighs> I don't know what it is, KTM and mirrors. I've had this one do the thing where it moves <laughs> already. You know, they're actually pretty stable. I can see fine in them and they're quite a good position, but I'd probably take the mirrors off if this was my bike and do some sort of bar end mirror. They're, they're not brilliant. Uh, other bad points, God. There's not much, you know. There's not much at all wrong with this. I, you know, I was going to say the bad point is it's too much for the road. You know, that was my initial impression from my first ride. But after living with it a bit longer, I've seen that it, it can be a pussycat. It can be an absolute beauty through town. You know, there, there, there's, it, is, it does tempt you to go fast because it has that, that grunt, you know, that instant power. When you first start riding it, it's addictive and you just, you just want to open it up. But once you've got past that and you know it's there, you don't, you don't feel like you need to experience it constantly, it's a pussycat. I think it would make a really good touring bike. 
One thing which could upset that is it's only now got a 16 litre tank. Because they've now added top feed injectors on this now, this has got another row of injectors in on top inside the airbox. It's mean it's they've had to reduce capacity on the fuel tank because they've had to cut out a bit of the bottom of the fuel tank to make room for the fuel injectors. So it's only 16 litres. The original bike, my old one, I think was 18 litres. So it's a couple of whole litres less, but KTM have improved the fuel efficiency of the bike. So, but I don't think they've improved it two litres worth to the tank. So I don't know what the range would be. I've not had a chance to try and do a mileage test on this, but it could, could be a problem on touring. You'd have to investigate that. Another thing, when you've got the wheelie control off, as I have now, there's no sort of display to remind you the wheelie control's off. And when you turn the bike on and off, it remembers all of those settings, which is great. I mean, that's been a criticism, or a criticism I've had of bikes like the, the Triumph, so you have to reset everything every time, which is great. But you just need to remember how you've got it set because it doesn't even tell you the wheelie control's off. So this bike is a brute and it will wheelie with any sort of misuse of the right hand. So that's the one to watch if you're a bit of a lunatic. If you're foolish enough to turn off the anti-wheelie, just bear that in mind. The sound of it is also amazing. For a standard exhaust system, it sounds incredible. I love the sound of the Super Duke. It sounds, it's got, a, you know, that big V-twin has its own character, its own sound. Nothing else sounds like it. It just sounds amazing on, on sort of overrun and on the power. I think a lot of that noise actually comes from the airbox. I think a lot of it is induction roar. But it is loud enough to live with the standard system on it. And this is another thing I love about this bike. You can buy it. You can unlock all of the packs and stuff. That is a bit of a bugbear. You've got to pay extra to unlock. The bike's already £16,000. It's an expensive bike. Then you have to fork out another 800 quid or so to unlock the performance pack and all those beautiful options I've been talking about and the quick shifter and blipper, which is also fantastic, by the way. So once you have spent all that money on the track pack and all that lot, you haven't got to rush out and then buy an exhaust. You haven't got to rush out and then get it remapped because it's got a snatchy throttle. So once you've, once you've bought the bike, you don't have to do, you don't have to spend any more money. It's all there, it's all you ever need. You haven't got to spend money on the engine to make it better. We're into night mode on the dash now. The night mode on the dash is this orange. I love it. I want that on the day mode. I love that. It looks great with the orange dash. That's the night mode. One thing they sorted for this year is where it doesn't flash constantly between night and day, night and day. The old one used to do that. It used to be a bit annoying. It used to flash between the two modes quite often. You'd go under a little bit of tree cover and it would change. Now it's got a, you know, it obviously takes an average of the light levels over a minute or something. It's changed back now. But it's not as flashy. It'll stay in one mode longer than it did before, which is a bit, it's a bit distracting before. So that is also an improvement. Even on the bumpy stuff, I and mean, I said this on my first ride video, the suspension is so supple, so compliant and sporty. This WP Apex is very, very good. There's nothing which is weak on this bike anymore. The old one used to have its flaws, and this is what I said in my first ride, you know, it was all about the engine, but the rest of the bike wasn't quite at the level of the engine. Now, the rest of the bike is up to the level of the engine. All in all, as you may have gathered, I'm rather taken with this bike. There is very little wrong, there's nothing wrong with it. There's a couple of tiniest of niggles, but you know, every bike has its niggles and this doesn't have many of them. It's a great, incredible machine. Now I do have the ZH2 at home and I'm gonna do a comparison between this and the ZH2. So keep your eyes peeled on the channel and if you've not already subscribed, subscribe to the channel because there's gonna be a lot more naked action coming. And I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about the bike. <laughs> See you later, guys. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, she's done it. I told you I was scared back there. Whoa! I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Whoa! That's it. That's it. Listen to me. 